Ai. Are you used to him turning it on? <laughs> Rigid workshop Q&A, take one. And Wait for it. Action. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee on Friday. This is uh, actually the time, because you know we've done the Reach It workshop, so this is very casual, right? Very just you and me. And um, so we've got the Reach It workshop, and we've already put out maybe seven like highly scripted um, topics. And each one takes a lot of time and a lot of effort for us to put it together. But in the meantime, in the comments section on YouTube, um, we've got some questions that have come up also on our live chat and in different messages around the place. So what we thought we'd do is that once a week, I can put together answers for all the questions that have come up, just casual answers, just chatty, chatty type answers. And, um, and we can cover way more topics you know, in real time based on what you guys are interested in. And then I'll go back and we'll actually turn them into a professional script with nice B-roll and all the, all the things that'll make it uh, cool. So I've chosen three topics for today because this is our inaugural um, Friday coffee, yeah? So I have some notes. So I've done my little research on a couple of things. The first one comes from, oops, I'm gonna go backwards one, Dr. Hoo Hoo Grub, right? Funny thing about hoo-hoo grubs is I used to eat them when I was a kid, right? <laughs> so in Australia, they call them witchetty grubs. In New Zealand, we call them hoo-hoo grubs and you cook them in butter and they taste like uh, peanut butter, okay? So anyway, so he asked me for information about silica. Time for glasses. Ta-da! Okay, so, so silica is really interesting and um, I know I've covered a lot over the years, but um, there's two kinds of um, silica. I should go two kinds or two kinds of silica because <laughs> otherwise I might be in trouble. So I'm going to do a screenshot. Um, so um, two kinds of silica and, and filtering silica is not as easy as you think because one type of silica has uh, an ionic charge and the other one doesn't. So if you're going to filter the water to give yourself spot-free water and... Um, and you only have a DI system, then you can't take out the one that has no ionic charge. And on the other side, if you only have an RO filter and no DI, then you can't take out the one that has an ionic charge because it's really, really small. So why would we want to take silica out? Well, silica, if, even what is silica? Silica is like the, the base type product, like you'd imagine glass is made from silica. Silica is actually the seventh most common mineral on the planet, right? That's, there's just loads of it everywhere. And it's in rocks, and the reason it's in your water is because the water goes you know, through the underground rivers and it ends up in, and over the land, and there's silica everywhere. So inevitably, a lot of places end up with silica in the water. And another, another product which you'd consider is silica is quartz. Right, so you imagine what color quartz is, it's white. Okay, so silica, when it dries, it dries white. If it dries white, that means it's reflecting the full spectrum of light, which means it makes it very visible, so it, um, it ends up on your glass. It also etches to glass because it basically is glass. So you can get hard water stains that are not made from hard water, they're made from silica. And um, so I might cover that. So let me just give, get some ideas. So if you're getting, if you're in a soft water area, which means that you've got low TDS and you're getting spotting, there's a high chance that that's actually silica, right, in the, in the water. If you're in a hard water area, then you wanna, um, you, 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 and you get white spots. You may have silica in the water, but you may have um, water hardness, and water hardness doesn't include silica, it's calcium and magnesium, also dry white, right? If you look at some of the re other reach of workshops, right? You'll already know that. So, um, so there's a lot of similarities in the properties of calcium, magnesium, and of silica. So you might ask, right, well, how do I know if it's silica or it's magnesium? Well, the, the simple test, if you have hard water um, stains on the glass and you get some vinegar and you rub the the spots with vinegar, if they come off, they're calcium and magnesium, and if they don't come off, then uh, silica. How's that? Um, so what is the other thing? Um, silica is um, silicon dioxide, so S-I-O, the S-I for silicon, and O for oxygen, and two, there's two of them. So the, 
The two types is an ionic silica, which has a minus one charge. So it's, we use the anion resin to, to attract it, but the what's called a colloidal silica has no charge. So if you put all your water through a DI system and it's got, um, and you can't tell the difference in the water as to how much ionic and how much colloidal. Um, so basically the, the, the ionic silica in the water will be attracted to the DI beads and it'll be filtered out, but the colloidal silica in the water will not because it's got no ionic charge and, and I'm going to do a reach it workshop on how DI resins work and that'll make more sense alongside that one. But that's the basic principle. So an, the ionic silica can be re removed with DI and but DI can't remove the colloidal silica um, and the colloidal silica is a bigger molecule Right, so the ionic one is like really, really small and the colloidal one is like, let's say a cluster, you know, it's a much bigger molecule and it can be taken out by RO. So if you want to remove silica from your water, you must have an RODI. That's it. That wasn't too bad, was it, Martin? Very good. Very good. All right, let's go to the next one. David from High Maintenance, he has asked some questions about um, the radial brush and different frames and how to clean them. And this is also like a, a really complex topic. But the principle is this. Um, because we sell all over the world, there's different frames which have got different shapes, different material, different depth of the frame, um, different paint. Some are painted, some are not painted, some are anodized and all sorts of things. And then you've got bricks, you know, the, the windows set into bricks. Um, and then there's French panes where they put the crisscross, they call them cut-ups or French panes and a few other names. So, so there's a lot of frames that people want to clean. And then there are different parts of the world. If you imagine you're in Dubai, um, you're not going to get a lot of moss, algae, lichens, anything like that on the, um, on, on the, on the, on the frames. But if you're in the UK or New Zealand or something like that, then in the UK and the Northern Hemisphere, it'll be the, the north wall, right? Never sees the sun, so you get algae and then you need to clean the frames. If you're in New Zealand, you're in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's the south wall, which never sees the sun. So, um, and, that, and that's the hardest part about doing all of these things is all over the world, everything's different. The geography is different. Even in the UK, you know, you've got Tudor in one area and Georgian in another area and America's got plastic houses made with vinyl in some areas and timber houses and brick houses. And so everything's different everywhere and every window cleaner who hasn't and would not normally have to have traveled a lot may think that the conditions that he's in are the conditions that everybody's in or something like that. So. We, um, in, in designing tools, we're trying to listen over the years. And I think that's where a lot of this comes from in Reach It Workshop, is that for the last, well, whilst I was a window cleaner before in, in Australia, in Sydney, um, the last 10, 12 years, I've been talking every day, nonstop, you know, in all sorts of media and um, in trade shows and things like that. I've talked to so many window cleaners. So I kind of got a bigger picture about all the different conditions. And then we designed the tools around, you know, trying to make sure that we meet what everybody has to do. Firstly, they have to clean the glass, but secondly, they also have to clean these different frames. And so we make some different brushes for that. So um, if you have, um, for example, French panes or cut-ups, then uh, the design of the radial and the radial light um, is the radial light is, is a double trim and the radial brush is a triple trim. So really the best brush for, for, for cut-ups is, is the radial. <laughs> the radial, right? Oh, yo. <laughs> right, so radial has one trim, two trim, there's about a centimeter less, and then another centimeter less uh, down to the third trim. So if you've got cut-ups, these bristles are gonna go over it. These, these inside bristles, if you can see them, right, they will also um, clean the frame, but they won't catch on the frame. Whereas if you get a rocker, you can't put a rocker on on a, on a cut-up because the, the rocker itself will catch on the frame, right? And if you look at light, that's why we call it light, right? Because it's much, much smaller. It's much, much more nimble, but it's got a single row of bristles around the outside and then the two soft bristles on the inside. Um, and again, you could use that really easily on, on French panes, cut-ups and stuff like that. Um, if you've got corners, 
where you get spider webs. So not everybody gets spider webs in the quarter, corners of their windows, right? Or, or spider nests. But, um, but certainly for everybody that does, that's why we put the radial bristles on there. So because you can, you can turn the brush through the corners. So you're not, everybody else's brush, including the constructor brush in the past, you have to kind of go into the corner like this. And now the technique is go like this. And then as you turn the brush down, all the water runs off the top of the brush and flushes it because that, those spider webs are sticky as anything. And usually if I go back to my old days, we used to have to go back up and chase the, chase the spider webs down with the rinse water. Well, that, that, that's all gone. That's all dealt with with the volume of water that we push across the top and it flushes it down and you never have to chase a spider web. So, so that's the corner of the frame. Like if there's a corner and the little guy gets in there and or little whoever they are, but anyway, they make babies in there and that's what happens. So, um, so, and then we have, by the way, on the French panes, we actually have a very unique brush. We've got a six inch brush, what's that, that long? And um, we've got a six inch brush for just cleaning the glass of French panes, because sometimes you don't want to clean the frame and other times you have to clean the frame, right? And that's what David was getting to, because he's from the UK and cleaning frames is expected because the traditional guys in the UK have always cleaned the frames. They've always wiped them down. So the water fed guys came along and said, I'll just clean your windows. And the customers said, well, what about my frames? My old window cleaner used to clean my frames. So um, what we have, what we, what we don't have is we don't have any brush designed which has um, downward facing bristles, right? So there's some on the market and they're really designed for the UK, for that UK area with the painted sills that are 120 millimeters deep and on 15 degrees angle or something like that. And so what, what our solution to that, if it suits, if it's ground floor, it's fine, right? Because the pivot is designed to be incredibly flexible. So you can go up and around and upside down and everything really, really nimbly. You know, so when we do a reach of workshop on this, we'll actually have video of that, right? About how, how nimble this brush is and how you can get around inside, upside down and all the way around a frame to surfaces and sides and everything and clean it properly. So that will be, um, that will be the, the way. So in the UK, if it's ground floor, then, then the pivot is amazing because you can just, you know, get onto that bottom sill. But what we don't have is if it's a second story sill, we, you know, you, you're not going to, you know, adjust. You could adjust the gooseneck and do this, but on the other side, you might say, well, I can, I've got a brush with downward pointing bristles and I'll just clean with that. And I would agree with you. Like we, we don't, um, we've played with it, but we don't have a solution for it. So um, we, that's not really our um, so, sort of target at this point is to solve that problem. Um, when you come to deep frame windows, like uh, commercial windows where the frames are really, um, set maybe two inches deep, 50 millimeters deep, then we would suggest to you, um, this is quite handy, Martin. <laughs> this is Martin's idea, this set. So we would suggest to you the deep frame rocker. Now deep frame rocker, it doesn't have a pivot. This is pivot, yeah? So as you twist the pole, the, the brush will pivot, yeah? Um, but deep frame, you can put a pivot on it if you want, but its actual design is just a, like a straight pull. In traditional terms, we'd say straight pull. So it's an up-down brush, and it's designed for commercial glass, for fast cleaning. So you just basically you know, go up to the top and you come down. It's got a rocker in there with a 20-degree movement of motion so that as the relationship of the pole to the glass changes through the stroke, the, the scrub pad stays on the glass um, at all angles of the pole. And a lot of scrubs. We have a lot of scrubs. We've got nine, eight different scrubs, right? Oh, are they all on there? <laughs> you are ready to rock and roll. So if anybody buys a rocker, by the way, you get, you get like loads of scrubs. And we don't sell a whole lot of replacement scrubs. Certainly not quickly. You know, we, we do sell a lot of them. But, um, and guys choose their favorite ones and then just order just the ones that they want and all of that. But all of them are designed to last a long time. They're not like steel wool, which is finished in 20 minutes, you know? put that back where it came from right so the idea is um, you know if you've got a commercial building and you don't have to clean the frames then you'd use deep frame if you do have to clean the frames then I would suggest to you that you would use light because it's super nimble right you can really move it around everywhere and anywhere so if you have to clean the inside of the frame and underneath the frame and down the frame like that then then you would use this well, that's for regular well it's the same 
we say for regular cleans because it's light and nimble and it doesn't have as much density of bristles. But we do. We also have guys who it's their go-to brush. So, so it depends. That, that's the thing: is what is regular is kind of like a generic term that has no real meaning because it depends what's on the glass. You know, so it's really light, light work. I mean, it's got internal bristles that you can you know scratch away at something. But if you're scratching away a lot at things, then you should get a rocker. Well, it's not a rocker. You should get a rocker. You know, with, put a scrub on there and everything's off in one or two strokes. You know, so. Um, modified the pivot, that's good, we don't have that. Um, but the other thing which I think is really relevant with frames, a lot of, I think what David was alluding to in his comment actually was very much that um, a lot of our vid videos, we don't clean frames, Martin. We always clean the glass and we teach how to get the, the, the rinse across the top, you know, miss the frame and all that. The reality is you can clean the frames and with the same technique, you're just going to raise your brush to the top of the frame and use exactly the same technique and you can scrub the, scrub the frames, right? But, the, but some people need to clean the frames every time. Some people need to clean the frames once a year. North wall, south wall, you know, gets different levels of dirtiness. Then there's the south wall, if it's the sun facing wall, maybe it's got more oxidation. The non sun facing wall, maybe it's got no oxidation. So there's no... Yeah, they're just all complex, you know, reach at workshop topics, all of them, you know, coming along. So, um, but the key, the key is that if you, if you switch to a reach at brush, whichever one it is, that you, you really have to change your technique because they're designed to, scientifically to, to solve a problem and to increase your efficiency. And I think efficiency is really, really critical now because everybody's talking about they can't find workers well, if you can't find workers, rather than turning down workers, learn how to clean faster. And we have a video on the techniques, so you can learn. Oh yes, where would they find that if they wanted to see it? Uh, the video is on YouTube. YouTube. Yes, and then in on which the store under each brush there is. Oh, there is true, true, video. true. Yeah. yeah, the technique. So the best way, I think, the fastest way to get to the technique videos is to go to one of the radial, maybe the radial brush, right? Radial, radial light, and radial rock. All got technique, yes. yeah. So radial, radial light, radial rocker, all have got the technique on there. And if you change your technique, you become faster. So, so there's loads and loads of other aspects of, of science in, in the design of the brushes. But for today, it's really just about frames. And then it come, the frames comes back to which brush and then using the pivot properly. It's not a pivot like anybody else's pivot. So you can get more agility or nimbleness, whatever might be the right word, you know, by doing that. All right, that's David done. Good. So Michael Aston, he asks about radial flow rates. He's saying he's also from the UK. In the UK, customers won't let you use their water or they don't have outdoor taps, right? So it's it's a completely different market and some of Europe is the same as, as the UK. So he was talking about the radial flow rates because they have to carry a thousand liters or 250 gallons of water in their truck, pure if already pure, and then that's the amount of water they've got for the day, and they've got to do as many jobs as possible in that day. It's really different to the to the to the to the other side of the, of the Western world, right? So, um, so the answer to that again comes back to what I was talking about technique. If you use your broom style brush technique with a reach it brush, you will you can't change your efficiency, even though your brush is capable of a higher efficiency. There's no and the, 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 your technique is your efficiency. If you change your technique and your tool can't do what your technique says, then you won't get a result. But if you don't change your technique with a tool that can deliver efficiency, then you can't get a different result, right? So, so the most important thing is to understand that everything about Reach It is about cleaning windows faster. Uh, everything is about efficiency. And so if you change your technique, you'll work faster. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's categorical and we've got thousands of customers around the world who, who prove it. And we have, we have more thousands of people who have never tried it, right? So, so that you, that's what these videos are for, is to try and catch you guys and, and let you know that, that we're really interested in getting your comments. We're interested in your feedback. You're interested, I haven't even drank my coffee. Boy, Whew, I haven't even stopped talking. 
Oh, please. Oh, great. Ooh, this is good. Coffee's on Friday. Okay, so change your technique, work faster. Now, the reality is like things like the rocker brushes, I mean, the guys are talking about four to eight to 10 times faster, um, which sounds unbelievable, but it's true. And so even if, even if you're two times faster and you use a higher flow rate, let's say you use 1.5 times more flow rate, but you're two times faster, then the total amount of water that you've used is actually less. So you've got your thousand gallons and you've used less water to clean a house, even though you had a higher flow rate. So there's flow rate and volume. You're worried about volume. I'm more, I'm thinking, you know, about flow rate. So, and then you get worried that if you have a higher flow rate, well, if you have a higher flow rate and use the same old technique that you've been doing for 10 or 15 or 20 years, you're gonna use more water. But if you study the radial technique, you're gonna use less water and then be able to do more jobs. You'll have cleaned faster. You'll fit more jobs into the day with the same water that you took in the morning, right? So the flow rate, he also asked, what is the flow rate? The flow rate for all radial brushes is designed at 2.5 liters per minute. So um, that's uh, basically the same as half a gallon a minute, something like that, a little bit under half a gallon a minute. And radial light um, can operate at about 1.5 liters a minute, right? So this one has a, a slightly lower um, flow rate. All, uh, actually this one can handle Rhino tube, the eight millimeter standard tubes, uh, 5 16 inch OD, but you will find all the radial brushes all need high flow, unless you've got like some crazy pump and it's working overtime because it, this, this tube compared to Rhino tube will deliver double the water volume at the same pressure, right? Or the same water volume at half the pressure. So your pump is not even working so hard, right? So that's critical to making sure you've got the flow rate is making sure you've got the right fluid dynamics, the right hoses and tubes coming through. And, um, and then, well, you know, maybe have we got reload here? Yeah, look at that. Everything is here. So I can ramble on. This is a great so <laughs> this is uh, this is reload. So the idea of reload is that you could carry a second brush um, with you uh, out on site, and so you can have a 14-inch brush and an 18-inch brush, or you could have um, a radial brush and a rocker brush, right? Depending on the job, right? And I'm going to put that back in there. That may be it demo one. Um, so, um, so the idea then is if you've got a 14 inch brush and an 18 inch brush, then you can with the same flow rate, right? So you don't have to go back and adjust your, your fluid dynamics and your pump and your pressure and all that sort of thing. All of them are the same, 14 inches, 18 inches, radial, radial, rocker, deep frame. So you can swap the brushes out. But if, you're use, if you can use a bigger brush with the same flow rate, you're gonna cover more glass with the same water. So it's another way of looking at how to save um, the water volume, yeah? Because you're gonna spend less time on the glass because you've used a bigger brush on a bigger piece of glass using the same flow rate. Um, the, the, the other little secret that I can give you because you're watching this is that we have another brush coming out which is even um, more light than this one. And we're gonna release that with an ultra low um, flow rate. We're actually doing some tests now how low we can get it, but we're trying to target about one, one liter a minute, 1 1.2 liters a minute. The, this is for the people that really, really need to conserve water. So they may be in drought conditions where they may need to just be super responsible about, about water use, but you, you, you're in, inevitably going to be exchanging at some point water use for time. So the if we get that water volume too low, you won't get the flush. You won't be, you won't get the flow rate, the, the flush over the getting the spider webs down the down the edge and stuff like that. There's 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 a there's a compromise at some point. So we're just trying to find a magic spot for you, and um, and then again for the mostly for the guys who are carrying water, then having uh, the option of an ultra low flow rate uh, rinse bar, you know, it should be very exciting. So we're hoping that that will hit the UK market. We're scheduled to release that November, let's say December the 1st, uh, 2021. Should I get early Christmas? 
an early Christmas present. It's a very nice brush. It's got loads and loads of sizzle in it too. That's, that's only just one of its benefits. And that is my coffee time. And also remember that with the cool days, Q&A on Fridays, right? Coffee on Fridays. It's coffee on Fridays. Oh, but Q, well, your, your, your tag will be, yeah. it will be Q&A Fridays, yeah. right? Yeah. People know that when they see this top they know that oh maybe my question will be answered. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we're gonna really try like these ones because we don't have to script them. I can just sit here and answer a bunch of questions. I'll write some notes for myself so I cover everything, you know, so you really feel like you got an answer, but it's much faster for us than than the time we invest to put out the, the reach at workshop. And what we really, really want from you is to comment, right? So on the YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com forward slash future of cleaning. We really want you to comment, right? We want you to comment with um, what you think of the topic if you want, um, but just to equally comment with what videos you want or what questions you've got answered. And then what uh, Jen, who's my coffee assistant, <laughs> my the hand model earlier. Um, so Jen's actually gonna compile those for me during the week and then I can prepare, you know, in, in very short time answers uh, to be able to, you know, give you back as many answers as we can uh, each week. And uh, so that's kind of like what we do with Friday afternoon, evening is record this one, Q&A Friday. And this is gonna, where are we gonna put this, man? We are gonna put this on YouTube, of course. Yeah, on the, in, in, the, in the Reach It workshop. In the Reach It workshop, it'll be workshop, once a week, there'll yeah. be a Q&A Friday. Yeah, we have a playlist called Reach It workshop. So yep. they can find all the, all the videos from this, where yeah. we do our regular workshops, yep. different topics, and also ask your questions. So check the Reach It Workshop playlist. Yeah, the easy link, because we're not going to edit this, we're not going to put any subtitles or scripts or anything on it, but the easy link is bit.ly.com, oh no, bit.ly, no, not .com, bit.ly forward slash R-E-A-C-H for Reach dash IT dash workshop. So bit.ly forward slash reach it workshop with a hyphen on either side of the it. <laughs> How's that? What else do we need to say? I think we're good, right? Comment? Yeah, comment and uh, if there's something you like or you don't like. Yeah, comment. yeah, because you might, I might have said something, just one word or one topic and you go, well, what about this? You know, because there's always an exception. You imagine there's just loads and loads of data or data, depending where you come from. And a guy in the UK is going to say, that's not true. A guy in Nevada desert will say, that's true. And a guy in Dubai might say, that's true. And a guy in New Zealand will say, that's not true. You know, so it, like I can answer for all of them. Like if, if we know where you come from, I can work out, you know, what, what the actual thing you're dealing with is. Like, I mean, even, even when we get down to bee poo, like not all bee poo is the same, right? They're not all buzzing around and eating the same flowers. So what comes out of a bee is not all the same. So, and I get that. So some guys will say it's like this and that doesn't work. And another guy will say it's like this and it does work. And we go, okay, well, you should change from this to this. So really your comments are- It's good if they mention where they're from. Where you're from, yeah. yeah. If you tell us where you're from, it's easier to give more specific- uh, Yeah, we advice. can get much closer to the mark with I an answer. They hear me, but I think they hear me. I hope they can hear you. We'll, yeah. we'll know, we'll know, we'll yeah. know soon. All right, so that'll that'll give me a, how do we sign off? We never design an out. I think you drink a cup of coffee. But <laughs> I think, <laughs> no, I think yeah, cheers. We'll go cheers, right? And then we'll, we'll think of a nice tagline for the, for the end of the next one. We're actually gonna have a bit of fun on these. Uh, we've got some great ideas, but today, yeah, is, today is, uh, is the beginning. And then I will go and, and check this uh, reload, but I've got a feeling it might be too tight. Okay, yeah. Maybe it's because it's the, the stuff inside. Ah, yes. It's yeah, gotten caught on. It's, it's so new, so it's not like it's stuff inside, right? Yes, oh. yes. There's a little ridge there. I know yeah. what it is. I know what it is now. It works. Yeah. It works. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Again, that's an efficiency. Anyway, I shouldn't carry on, but it's an efficiency tool because nobody's going to go back to their truck and change their brush. But if it's on your waist, right? You go from small windows to big windows. You can go from small brushes to big brushes. If you're going from the south wall where everything could be cooked on to the glass and you need rocker to get it off the glass in a couple of strokes, but you go to the, the, the 
north wall and you can just use a radial and get it off with the bristles and then there's less friction and so on and so on. Okay, time, time, time. <laughs>